how do you find your mental hygiene routine to be? Do you even know how to define it? In today's episode, I'll be interviewing Gabriella Wright, who is the innovator of the Mental Hygiene Toolkit, which is a collection of mind cleansing and self-awareness tools to help individuals nurture their bodies, minds, and spirits, and develop inner guidance to consciously choose the best path for their lives. She's also been a long life student of Tibetan Buddhism and Vedanta, and we will be exploring how to understand our deeper purpose through mental hygiene and the methods that she's developed. Gabriella, I'm so excited to have you with us today. Oh, hello. Thank you, Christina, for having me. It's so lovely to, to meet a, a fellow colleague on, on the road to self-liberation. Yeah. 100% <laughs> exploring the depth of consciousness. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. To begin, um, I guess I'd love to understand more about what is the Mental Hygiene Toolkit and what made you develop it? Wow, because um, those are two potent questions. So I'll start with the very simple one. What is mental hygiene? I think the easiest way to understand it is actually through the distinction of the word. We have physical hygiene, we have dental hygiene. Why can't we have a relationship with our minds and our mental well-being that allows us to create um, self-awareness around our mental hygiene? Because, you know, when, when you wake up in the morning and your body's not stretched, you feel, you know, you feel tense. And that tension can actually lead into not feeling too good during the day. So, you know, we all know, okay, let's do a little stretch. Let's do a little breathing exercise. It's going to help my body feel better. But actually, that also helps the mind feel better as well. So mental hygiene is not only labeling self-awareness around your mental well-being, but it's also a way for you to understand the interdependence between, you know, your physical well-being, your, your emotional well-being, your spiritual well-being, and how it's all interdependent of each other. So mental hygiene can be as simple as I wake up in the morning and I'm sitting in my bed and I'm like, how do I feel today? Maybe I don't have the right word, but mm, I could have slept another hour, but mm. I don't have time. Okay, but I know that's going to impact how I feel later in the day. What can I do to enhance my mental hygiene right now? And that might be a quick breathing exercise that takes 30 seconds that can take you into the energy that you would have felt that you needed with, with your eight hours that you didn't get just now. So it's literally self-assessment tools that allow you to enhance your mental hygiene. When you're in the shower, oh my goodness, I didn't have time to meditate. And I had a really toxic conversation this morning with my mother. Happens, you know, we all love our mothers, but sometimes they're irritating, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and it just hard. You know, and or, and you didn't have time to meditate, or maybe you don't meditate, and and you had your eight hours of sleep, but 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 it's just oh my god, I'm overwhelmed, and I have eight hours of zooms, and I've got to go to the grocery. All of a sudden, and you haven't taken your shower. Go in the shower. What is water? Water is an an emotional body of water, and we are eighty five percent water, as you know. We're we're made of water, so you start communing as you're in the shower as a mental hygiene. And you just have the shower on you and you're visualizing and seeing all the toxicity just leaving your body, going through from your mind, from your face. And it's a gentle visualization and it's all going down to the drain, literally. So it's little techniques like that that allow you to enhance your mental well-being. And that is under the guise of mental hygiene. Now, mental hygiene wasn't something I invented at mm -hmm. all. Um, this was done, uh, this was developed as a concept by a psychologist early last century. Um, but it's it's a term that kind of got lost over time. Mm -hmm. and, and when I was able to find it again, I was like, this is perfect. This is what the world needs today, because we have so much stigma around mental health in general. We're like, Oh, but that's mental health. That belongs to mental illness. That is is something that's a. Uh, I don't have that. You know. You know. People are like, okay, that's that's over there. I don't need a diagnostic. But my mental hygiene is something I can control. 
It's something that is in my hands. It's something that I can contribute to and I can build my toolkit as the days go by because I know what will work for me, what will not. And what mental hygiene is, it's in that space just before your mental health. It's in that space where mental well-being enhances who you are. It enhances your relationship to yourself, to relationship to other people. And it gives you the tools to know when I'm really not well. And I'm like, you know what? I might need to have an intervention here and go and find someone who's a psychologist, a psychiatrist, and I will seek something that I need more than just mental hygiene, you see? So it gives you that space, that capacity to understand and ask questions that, oh my God, this isn't working anymore. I might need a little bit. I might need some help, you see? So that's where it lies, mental hygiene. Oh. Beautiful. Yeah, because I was actually like reflecting on my own interpretation of what I thought mental hygiene, what it means to me. And it was initially like, I guess it means awareness of what's effective in my rituals, or how I work with my five bodies of consciousness, with how I work with my energetic body, my physical body, because I, I guess as our mental health is always changing and evolving, Absolutely. the tools that we need to use also have to change with how we're applying our wellness techniques and also building on like the way we're evolving with our own spirituality and also when it comes to our own general health and well-being so absolutely you're completely right and that and it is a dynamic response the problem that we have today in general is that we think that human beings are very structured you know and it's good to have a routine. It's, that's very important. But that doesn't mean you're a structured human. It means that there's life between the structures. So our, our, our body moves. It's a process. It's not a fixed thing. Our mind moves. Thank God it moves. Otherwise, you'll be stuck in a moment your whole life. Or you'll be stuck on, you know, a, a piece of information that was wrongly programmed to you. And you think that your mother is horrible. And you're going to think that your whole life. I don't know why I'm bringing motherhood into this <laughs> But, but I am for some reason. <laughs> but, but it's a very is, collective thing that everyone has to deal with as well, you know, parental exactly. narrative. So I guess it's something that a lot of people can relate to. Absolutely. So it's, you know, it's it's important to understand that we move, we evolve, we change, we transform, and thank God we do. So our mental hygiene does as well. And it's 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 it empowers us to accept change. Yeah. Beautiful, beautifully said. And I guess going back to the collective piece, what do you think is like, what do most people need from your perspective when, with regards to mental hygiene? What would you say is like, if you could give give the world one tool right now, what would it be in this moment in time? I'm gonna, um, I'm one technique, it's so simple. And actually Deepak and I, we share this technique because Deepak's taught it and I've taught it differently. Um, and he coined it as the stop technique. Um, and it's literally, you stop. You observe. Mm -hmm. You start perceiving what's going on where my awareness is, oh, it's in my chest right now. Mm -hmm. My stomach's moving. And then once you're there, you actively engage in the sensation of smiling in your body. And you just bring that smile. And look, I'm already breathing differently. Does smiling deepen your breathing naturally? Or yeah. does it? Does it? it yeah. I wondered if it had like a nervous system response when you smile. Because smiling is connected also to the vagus nerve and yeah. it's also connected here. So when you smile, it's the muscle and it opens the heart naturally. And mm -hmm. the heart is, of course, in the area of the rib cage and that's connected to breath. You see, look, I saw already my, my diaphragm is higher. Surrender. Surrender. But you see how interesting that is? That's already changed the energy of how we're talking. 100%. And it's so simple. It's you literally, you're in the middle of a Zoom or you're in the middle of like, there's so many phone calls around me. 
the kids are playing in the background, the bridge alarm is going off. You know what? Let me just stop. And it changes. And it's a simple thing because it's not related to anything exterior. It's related mm -hmm. to you. Because you don't need a bell. You don't need an incense. <laughs> you don't need to even tap your hand. You, but no, stop. And you know, and that and that really works. And then when you can move forward after that, and it's we're not asking more than sometimes three seconds. Sometimes three seconds of potency is infinite, you know, or 30 seconds. But it the more you do it, the more you create space, and the more that potency becomes longer, and the more you're in the gap of infinite possibility, and in that gap of infinite possibility, you remember who you are. And then you're like, oh yeah, I'm not that crazy demanding parent oh I'm not that overwhelmed entrepreneur oh I'm not that you know mother who's agonizing her child right now because it's annoying me <laughs> you know so so all of a sudden you're not all of that and you're just who you are truly beyond the conditioning and it takes little little moments so that's one technique that I think is universal beautiful thank you thank you so much for sharing of course we're so lovely to tune into that with you like in, life, in real time I really really yes. felt the shift. I really felt the shift of the energy I was like oh I can stop the podcast now <laughs> I love that I love it I love it and going to your own personal journey I'd love to know because obviously we were just talking about the dynamic of our mental hygiene and the way it, it's always evolving so mm. what has helped what tools have helped you the most in your own journey that have really like stood out for you as you've applied this I think um, the number one tool over the years, um, and I've been on this journey for 23 years, let's say, so it's more than half my life now. And the number one tool for me has been meditation. Now, no, no matter how long or short your time is in that self-reflection, but as long as you engage with that moment of connecting with the silence within you or the, the infinite version of you without the conditioning of all the roles that I just named before, mm -hmm. that for me has helped me heal, has helped me find joy, has helped me uh, find almost the cosmic joke in everything that is going on in humanity right now, because it can be very overwhelming. You know, I'm, I'm smiling saying that because when you connect to who you are, you connect to joy. You do, you ultimately connect to joy. And sometimes, you know, you, you can be joyous in very tragic situations and yeah. it, it's okay. It's okay because that joy has your back. You can experience sadness, you can experience tragedy, but when you're, embedded and you go back to the source of joy which is ultimately who you are you're healing and you're on a journey and that's and I, it's important you know yeah it's actually interesting that you bring that up because I did have a conversation the other day where I asked someone have you ever experienced happiness when you're in a state of sadness mm -hmm. and when I think about it considering it's kind of like a polar opposite right when it comes to like the energetics of it too, of the emotion. Absolutely. But I still think, and I don't know if I would define it as joy necessarily, but I'd like to challenge you on this as well, because for Absolutely. me, it's more like, I guess you can still find peace and sadness and it's more of just like ultimate acceptance. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever been able to experience ultimate, like joy and sadness, but maybe it's just due to the perception that I've interpreted. So you know what it is? I'm going to give you a little distinction here. Mm -hmm. Happiness, sadness. Mm -hmm. They're the same thing. Just the extreme of, they're just an extreme um, polar opposite of each other, but they're the same energy. So meaning happiness depends on something and sadness is triggered by something. Whereas joy is a common denominator of actually our human experience. 
Because if we didn't feel joy in between our emotional reactivity, joy can be equated to wonder, wonder, enchantment. I am so curious of this world. Wow, that human just went through that experience and still has the resiliency and will to live. Wow, I am in awe. That is a that is a layer that is a that is a a layer of joy. That is a layer of but joy is almost like a, 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 a an active loving perception of reality, of my fellow humans, of mm -hmm. these humans that are on the way. And and happiness and sadness are emotions on the journey. And you have so many different emotions, but joy, love, peace are fundamental states of being yes. of who we are when we're unobstructed, when there are no obstacles that are causing emotional reactivity. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. And, and I feel that when I go into that meditation state, I'm able to fully embrace my re emotional reactivity I've experienced extreme sadness in my life. Going back to the question that you, you asked before, why did I start the mental hygiene pool? I lost my sister to suicide five years ago. And, and five years ago next week, you know, June 16th. And that I still remember. I was in my house. I get the phone call. I stand up from this couch. I scream. I scream from a place I had never screamed from before. Mm -hmm. And my body collapsed on the floor. I couldn't walk. And I was like, what? It can't be true. What is this? And as I came to the realization that it can't be true, but the information came from my parents, so it must be true, what's happening with them. They must feel horrible. I'm only the sister, but I'm feeling I can't do anything. What can I do? And so as the emotional reactivity just overwhelmed and programmed my body and started to slowly subside and I was like, okay, breathe, get up, go to the temple. And that's the first thing I did. I managed to walk a little bit because I live next to a temple and I walked to this temple and I sat there and it was a rainy day and I was sitting under the rain and I was crying and these moments are full of potency mm -hmm. they're full of emotion but they're also full of you and there's no disregard in any emotion that we feel and often in mental health today, the environments, oh, it's bad to feel sadness, it's this and that. No, vulnerability is extreme strength. It's a beautiful place to be in. As long as you're able to get a hook and pull yourself out when you need to, so you don't get stuck in the moment because when you're stuck in a moment or you're stuck in a traumatic experience or you're stuck in an event that occurred and it's recurring and it's recurring, you're in a rut and that rut can control your life. And that's when you don't have freedom anymore. And all of a sudden suffering becomes your common denominator and joy is not there anymore. So answering your question is yes, I started this because my sister passed away through lack of not only her own mental hygiene, but also from the people around her, the lack of compassion, the people who are friends, they were not, they didn't have the tools of mental hygiene or self-awareness to understand that someone is in pain mm -hmm. and that someone was alone and someone needed help because sometimes mental hygiene is not for you it's actually for the other people around you the people you love you know mm -hmm. and so I was like this is it we need to help people I want to make sure nobody ever feels alone yeah. so that's the story thank you so much for sharing that experience with us and, and the world and 
and I also think it's been so remarkable how you've how it's led you to this point in as a as a healing energy that you can now transcend in anything that you do and based on what you just shared I'd love to get your advice on anyone who might be in a rut right now and in that need of having that compassion and needing that support from their peers who might not have it available to them. So first of all, I think the fundamental thing here is to truly know that you're not alone. It, it, I, and I know it might sound, oh God, what is she talking about? No, you really are not alone. You are connected to so many thousands and hundreds of people who are experiencing a tormented inner landscape like you are. So we really, so what you're seeing is not reality. Remember, what you're feeling is something that will pass. You're stuck in a rut right now, which means that you need to ask for help. And when you ask for help, you will find that connection, you know. So first of all, that's really important because what we do is is about being never alone, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, how can you find that? And that there's two ways about this. There's the more like, okay, what do I need immediately? So we offer tools, we use technology, we have an AI emotional chatbot called Peewee, and you can ask her questions. Peewee is actually the nickname of my little sister. Um, but it, it's, yeah, it's really cute. Um, and we're developing a whole uh, content series on her as well, um, so that she can be present to everyone who feels alone, um, animated version as well. Um, but the point being is, is that get yourself, find the tools, even through technology, because technology doesn't judge you, to help you take you through some exercises. What do I need right now? I need some mental resilience. I need to understand. I need to, I have anxiety. How can I get out of this panic attack right now? And if it doesn't work, you need to find someone in your family and be like, listen, I need help. Take, let's work on this together. Let's let's please share this intimate space. It's a way for you to reach out to create stronger bonds with the people you love. Remember, vulnerability is not a place of weakness. Vulnerability is so strong. It's the pillar of power. And it's something that's very misinterpreted. You know, so if you have that as the pillar of your power and you're showing your vulnerability and you are asking for a bridge of communication with someone, then that person is like, wow, she is being honest. I don't know much. I might not have the answer, but you know what? We're going in together. We're going to go. And all of a sudden you're helping that person to come on a journey through your journey. So remember that you are not alone, you know, you're yeah. not alone. And then there's another part of this journey is that once you embark on, once you're out of the, the rut right now that has triggered something that it's really hard for you to breathe and get out of, and, and once you're out of that, then there's another journey to take, is who am I? Who are you? Who are you truly beyond the identity that was given to you at birth? Who are you beyond the name that was given to you? You know, who are you beyond the constructive reality that you built? Because who you are is not what you think you are. And that's where the healing is. So you start that journey. You start that journey to self. And then as you're starting that journey to self, you realize that you're not alone because you are communing with the real you, not the conditioned you, not the Gabriella, not the daughter of, Paul David Wright and Catherine Wright, not the sister of Pee Wee, not, you know, no, I'm someone beyond that. Mm. I'm some, I'm, I, and, and wow. And you know what? I've been communing with this person, with this, you know, no name version of myself for 23 years. And you know what? It's taken me through everything, tragedy, beauty, wonder, or sadness, happiness, struggle, divorce, you name it. But it's been a beautiful journey. 
and you accept at that point you accept the tapestry the tapestry the fresh the leonardo da vinci version of yourself the like psh, wow i am all of that and it's wonderful because there's so much more <laughs> unlimited potential exactly unlimited so is it true I was going to ask you but then I was like hang on a second as you were saying that like how this is is this how you define the essence or is it not about definition it's just tuning in and embracing that feeling of being over instead of needing it to be defined right because I was like how do you define that and I'm like hang on a second the whole point is not to define that. <laughs> it's I think the only thing, that. <laughs> absolutely. And I think the only thing that is wonderful about this is that if we go back to the name that was given to our species, human beings, we're not human doings, we're no. not human namings, we're human beings. We are meant to be. So why are we trying to not be? I mean, I'm sorry, but why are we trying to confine who we are? Yes, there are certain roles we play, but we can play them all. We don't need to get stuck in one. To be or not to be, that is the question, right? Hamlet's whole play is based on what does he need to do as a choice? Can he break out of this predicament that he has? But there's this whole thing in society too, where I feel like I, can, I think you and me are quite similar in the sense we're both very multifaceted women with a lot of interests and we like to express ourselves through multi, many mediums. And, mm-hmm. and I think people struggle with that energy sometimes because they need to hold on to something. They need to understand, like, where do you fit, you know? And like, how can I make sense of who you are? Because most people don't, aren't used to operating in that way of like, I can be it all. Oh, believe me, I've had my, <laughs> My share fair of struggle. I was, I'm an actress, as some of you might know, I'm an actress and I have a career in France, although I haven't done any French movies for a while because I've been overseas. And in France, clearly, oh, you're an actress, but why you, why do you have like multiple charities? Why are you giving talks? Why are you like, why do you look like this, but you're not that? And I was like, you know what? All of this is annoying me. You just follow me. I'm not going to follow you. Okay. So that's my point. The point is, is like, be bold, (laughs) go for it, express yourselves, be it, lead. You know what? There's no other person like me in this world. Great. I'm happy to be the only one, but you know what? I'm connect with all beings because as long as we're in our self-expression, then it's wonderful. You and know? as long as it's authentic to how we want to be in that moment, then that's all we need to pay attention to. <laughs> exactly. And speaking of you know, fitness, mental fitness, the more you respond to spontaneity, the more dynamic your mind is, the more you engage with curiosity, the more you engage with awe, the more you engage with the beingness of humans, then that's when you realize that you're transforming and you're engaged. You're not stuck. You're not stuck. Thank you. Thank you so much, (laughs) Fabiola, for sharing all of that magic. (laughs) It's giving me life. I've got like a pep in my step right now. I just want to dance all over this room. And I love your dancing, by the way. (laughs) Thank you. I'm like, holy this girl has, she's going for it. I love it. <laughs> Thanks. I've got, I've, it's my best language. I've got to say, like, I think before anything, dancing is like my one, my, my go-to source of medicine. It just shifts everything in my that. body and it just helps. It makes me, it's my most authentic form of expression, I think. Um, it's beautiful. And yeah, it's thank you. Really wonderful. I love it. I, I see a very spunky side to you. It's very cute. I love thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Very <laughs> much. So to conclude this conversation, which I do not want to end on any note, but I'd love to invite you to a cognitive assessment that is provided by our sponsor, where we will be testing your cognitive abilities and giving you insight to your own mental hygiene to an extent. So I will be... see what happens there. (laughs) I will be making you a host and you can share your screen with us. And it should just be like a two minute assessment make sure to start your day with a bang (laughs) 
Well, this is going to be very fun. They're, they're probably going to understand that I am not a computer whiz. So share, <laughs> share my screen. Here we go. Can you see my screen? Fantastic. Yes. And if you could yes. just put it in full screen. So, so we can do, see. Okay. So how do I do that? If you, go, just, if you go, oh, start task, go to start yeah. task. And then. Does that work? Start task. Yeah, perfect. Yes. Are you ready? Okay. okay. That is the question. <laughs> Try to keep the cursor right at, in the center of the ball. Okay. Hold, hover the cursor over the ball to start. Okay, and then press the space bar, bar when the color of the word is the same color as the letters. Okay. Okay. And so then what do I do? Clear. So all you have to, so space bar, you're going to have to have your, your mouse and one hand on the mouse and another hand on the space bar. Okay. And then that's pretty much it. Then you're ready to go. This feels very dyslexic already. I'm dyslexic, guys. Okay. This is <laughs> Okay. Okay. And then I have to do what? And then I have to so hover the cursor over the bowl to start. Okay. And then you're in, then you're in the game. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Nice. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. Look, look at there, 80% 80 already, says Mrs. Dyslexia. I don't believe it. I'm super um, dyslexic. Unlimited capability. <laughs> okay, I'm following you, you little cursor. Okay. Oh, this is very interesting. Who knew that I had computer skills? <laughs> da, da, da. Yeah, you're almost at 90, almost 100% accuracy. Look at that. Amazing. Uh, beautifully done. Oh, I am so impressed with my own. <laughs> <laughs> so what does it mean? Amazing. So it's. After you after you go through this process, it'll kind of give you more insight. But we don't have to do that right now. It was more just to give okay. you some some fun game time. And, oh, I love um, that! And um, the results kind of get shared with you after after the registration. Oh, got it. Okay, so I'll do that in a bit. Yeah. Amazing! <laughs> oh my god! Thank you. Thank you so much, Gabriella, for everything <laughs> for sharing your wisdom with us and your stories and your tools and i'd love to give you the opportunity also to share more about your foundation for anyone who might be interested absolutely well thank you first of all thank you so much christina i um a pleasure meeting you and a pleasure being with your energy you have lovely joyful energy and i really want to commend you for that because we need joy in the space we really do um, and we need inspiration and we also need to take things yes there are very heavy things in the world yeah. you know people people pass away earlier than they should um, but remember that you're not alone and 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 when you have leaders like yourself um, then we need to hold on to that joy and that spark because it's just remember when you light a fire and there's one spark and that can light another fire so you're sharing your fire, you're sharing, you know, fire is the energy of transformation. Fire is the energy of let's burn the things that are holding us back. You know, fire is the energy that actually wakes us up in the morning. You know, it's the Agni. So, so I wanted to say thank you to you. Um, and I wanted for, for all those who listened and who are interested in more about not only my journey, but the foundation of what we're doing, you can go to neveralone.love. And you can follow us on socials, neveralone.love, and you can use our technology for free. Um, and we'll be developing uh, more and more hubs over uh, in Europe. So we hope Spain will be our next hub as well. And um, there's a lot of activities. We have a lot of online uh, um, festivals and activities. So just join whenever you and, and stay updated when you want to, if you want to, and join the community. <laughs>
Beautiful. Thank you so much, Gabriella. It was so nice to interview you today, honestly. Made my day. <laughs> oh, thank you, Christina. Well, made mine. And I'm just so happy I'm not dyslexic anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly not. I'm like, great, I've outgrown this thing. There you go. <laughs> 100%. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And I'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>